is up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Bleeding BNG Podcast, episode 119 and to give you a timestamp as I do for all of my episodes. Before we get too deep into this episode, today is Friday, April the 26th, 2024 and last night we had round one of the 2024 NFL Draft. But before I bury the lead, don't want to bury the lead too much. If you're checking this out on YouTube, as always, be sure to comment, be sure to like, and be sure to subscribe, especially if you're checking this out on audio-only platforms like Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Please leave a rating. Please leave a review. That's how we finesse these algorithms so that when you're searching for anything, Washington Commanders, Bleeding B&G is that number one content hub that comes up on all of your search bars. But now that we got that out of the way, let's get into this nitty-gritty because yesterday was a historic, a monumental Whatever adjective that you want to call it for the Washington football team franchise or the Washington football franchise. Yesterday, with our number two pick, we selected quarterback Jaden Daniels out of LSU, Louisiana State University. Something that I've I've, I've been feeling, I've been calling for a couple of months now. I told you guys that he was better than um, Drake May in um, November, and it seems like Adam Peters and the guys over there in Washington might have agreed. Lance Newmark, Martin Mayhew, Doug Williams, my guys. Uh, shout out to them in that war room, even though they told us it was new and improved, but it looked like the same old war room I've been seeing since 2004. But shout out to them. Shout out to them because one thing that we do know, even though the war room might look the same, there's a lot of different guys and a lot of capable capable guys that um, are adequate in doing their job. So I'm just going to look and recap tomorrow. I'm going to get you guys out of here. We're going to recap tomorrow. Um, Excuse me. We're going to recap yesterday. And we're going to look forward to tonight because tonight is round two and round three of the draft where we have five picks. So just as as amazing as yesterday was, it was very low in volume. We only had one pick and it happened about 10 minutes into the draft, right? So it's very anticlimactic. If you guys go look at my man Rio Robinson, go look at my social medias, Tay and Todd. We had our draft watch party yesterday and everybody put our reactions up. Uh, we, we got ignorant to say the least. We got very ignorant, very rowdy and very wild to say the least. So go ahead and check that out on our social media pages. But after that, it was kind of like a, 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 a dimmer, right? It was kind of like a dim down. Uh, it was like, I went on this super high and then like, I'm sitting waiting for the rest of the first round to see if we're going to be trading back in, um, with all of our draft capital, which ultimately didn't happen. Um, so the moment of us drafting Jaden Daniels is very anticlimactic because you still are there for a draft party that you're going to be there for four more hours. So you just sit and you just resonate and you, and you rejoice in the fact that you selected the reigning Heisman trophy winner. Uh, and I think that this was a home run pick for Washington. I know some media experts and some fans, I know you guys wanted Drake May, but if you guys go back and look, and I'm going to link it in my comments, um, go back and look at my last episode where we titled it the Jaden Daniels versus the Drake May saga. And while I do see some positive capabilities and some positive traits out of uh, Drake May, excuse me, Jaden Daniels was simply the pick here. Jaden Daniels is simply the better football player, and I'm going to acknowledge that he is two years older, but I'm not sure that Drake May will get to the level that Jaden Daniels is in the next two years. Now, he has a pretty good situation. Ah, I'm not sure because New England Patriots supporting cast isn't all that amazing. So it'll be interesting to see how Drake May's career starts to turn out because you know him, Caleb, and Jaden, their careers are going to start running hand in hand from last night on until all of those retire. They're going to start comping those guys. Oh, they're 2024 NFL draft class. So prepare yourselves now because that's going to be happening for the, for the rest of the, the next decade. That's going to be happening for the rest of the next decade. These guys comparing the career arcs of the top three quarterbacks in the draft. But I'm super excited. If you're checking this out on YouTube, you see a smile hasn't left my face yet. Um, Because we finally got a playmaker. We finally got somebody that fans are going to want to come see. Now, is that going to win you ball games? No, but I think that Jaden Daniels is a winning type of uh, football player, winning type of quarterback that gives you the flash. You know what those type of players are? That contributes to winning while doing it their way in a stylistic and prolific way. Those are called superstars. Those are called superstars. And while I don't think that Jaden Daniels is a superstar necessarily yet in the NFL, I think that he has all the makings to be. I think that he has all the makings to be. Now, after a long, treacherous draft draft process, 
offseason process where we had Top Golf Gate, we had Antonio Pierce Gate, we had Jaden Daniels Mom's NCAA recruiting violations gate. Does he want to be in Washington? Oh, he really wants to be a Raider. Whatever you want to call it, gate. Whatever you want to call it. I think that at that moment, it was just people have not having much to talk about because nothing was really necessarily leaving out the walls in Ashburn. And that story grew legs and came to national media. And like I mentioned on my social media pages the other day, yeah, Dan Snyder is gone. Yeah, Dan Snyder is gone. But it seems like the national media still loves to, to prop Washington up as that laughing stock of the league. Well, guess what? I think with the moves that we've made this all season, compounded with the move that we made yesterday in drafting Jaden Daniels, I think that those laughs and those jokes might be ending pretty soon. I think that those laughs and those jokes might be ending pretty soon. Just listen to some of the analysis um, from people that were reacting, that were active drafts and reacting. You know, CJ Shroud was like, ooh, they got a dog. With Jahan and Terry outside, super underrated. And I know that they come from the same area. They work with the same quarterback coach. So, you know, CJ Shroud is naturally going to say positive things about Jaden Daniels, right? But go look at Michael Parsons sitting next to him. As soon as Jaden Daniels was drafted, he didn't talk for the entire segment. He was over there going through it. Buddy was flustered knowing that he's got to face Jaden Daniels for the next, for two two times a year, for the next however long he plans on being a Dallas Cowboy. Because I'm going to speak positive energy. I'm going to speak positive light into this because I am scored by 2012 and RG3 and I'm not trying to be. So we're going to have this franchise quarterback for the next, at least the next decade, at least for the next 10 years plus. We might be looking for another quarterback in 2034. I'm speaking positive vibes. I just smudged the house before the draft. Um, so it's all positive vibes going on in here for sure. Um, but let me tell you why I think that Jaden Daniels is a home run of a pick. Um, this is a guy that has shown you the capability of having tremendous growth um, throughout the course of his career. Yeah, is he an older prospect? Absolutely. But he's younger than the likes of Joe Burrow coming out. Or, or, or around the same age as the likes of Joe Burrow coming out. Right? With a similar career path. And I know some people try to deviate. Oh, I know some people like racially charged comps. But I think that Joe Burrow's career path and his career arc is the comp that you want to look for when you're looking down the line for Jaden Daniels. Um, yeah, he played more before getting to LSU. But this narrative that Jaden Daniels only had one good season and his breakout season was in his fifth season simply isn't true. He had a 19 to 2 touchdown and interception ratio as the only true freshman to ever start at Arizona State University. I would call that a breakout. I would call that a breakout. Now, while I consider that a breakout as a true freshman, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you before this season, he gave you number two type film, number two pick in the draft type film. But guess what? He compounded that this season. He he more than enough made up for it this season by giving you number one in the pro, in, in the draft type film. There were many pundits saying that they'll take uh, Jaden Daniels over Caleb Williams. Now, would I have done that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I can see where they're coming from. Just simply reading, um, going off of the film of the 2024 season. This is a guy that I think that Adam Peters mentioned it yesterday. Uh, he can take your soul from you. He can take your soul from you. And that's something that if you've really been looking through the tea leaves and if you've really been paying attention, yeah, nothing has ever left out of Washington. We didn't have any leaks like we've been used to in years past and things of that nature. But they've been telling you that Jaden Daniels is the pick the whole time. Damn it, two months ago, I made an episode where I asked, did Dan Quinn just reveal the favor for the for the um, number two pick in the NFL draft? I asked that over two months ago. Where he did a radio interview with the Junkies before the combine, and he called Jaden Daniels a, ga a game changer. He called Jaden Daniels a game changer. I knew it then. When the other words that he used for Drake May and Caleb Williams was what? DC? What, uh, he used DC for Drake May, and I forgot what he used for Caleb Williams, but it wasn't as endearing as game changer. And it doesn't matter now because neither one of those guys are my quarterback, and Jaden Daniels is the game changer. The game changer. If you've listened to anybody in the NFL media, what's the one common thing that they've been saying throughout this coaching process outside of the likes of like Daniel Jeremiah, who was swearing upside, up and down, that he just knew Adam Peters. He knew he want, what he wanted to do. Adam Peters told you in his press release yesterday, Jaden Daniels has been the answer for a long time. 
Solo, who, who, the, who the hell Daniel Jeremiah thinks he knows? Adam Peters told you yesterday that Jaden Daniels has been an answer for a long time. Why not Jaden? Why not Jaden? Now, going back to the one um, common thing that you heard a lot of, you know, the talking heads and everybody that talks about the draft and things of that nature um, is that they were talking about how Jaden, uh, how Jaden um, is just this guy who's going to work hard, um, is going to be a grinder and is going to instill culture into your locker room. I don't care what age age that you're looking for in, in that demographic. I mean, I don't care what age you are as a, as a, a prospect coming out. That type of characteristic, those type of tra uh, traits appease any demographic. Excuse me. I was fumbling through my words, but we made it through. We made it through. And another thing that many of the draft talking heads were talking about throughout the draft process is that I, I just can't see a guy like a defensive coordinator like Dan Quinn what in the game plan against Jaden Daniels two or three times a year? Jaden Daniels is the type of prospect that's going to keep a defensive guru mind like a J, uh, Dan Quinn up all night. And I kept hearing this from many different talking heads. So you would have been a fool to ignore these things um, being mentioned. And if you really had your third eye open, Jaden Daniels been the pick this whole time. Adam Peters told you yesterday. Now, nothing came out of Washington. But shout out to my man, Capital Paparazzi. He told you last week, they picked up Jaden Daniels in an in a Uber Black. Ten it out, Suburban. Dan Quinn, Adam Peters. They picked up everybody else in a fucking lift. In a pull up and go. They had Young Jock picking them boys up from the airport. So if you really had your third eye open and you weren't delusional like a lot, like a lot of the Drake May fans... You should have been, you, yesterday shouldn't have come as a surprise to you, excuse me. You should have known that Jaden Daniels was the pick this entire time. And a lot of you guys got mad because a, a, a little over a month ago, I said, man, personally me, I've always had J.J. McCarthy over Drake May as a prospect. Well, guess what? Did y'all hear what Adam Schefter told you, the final two um, options for the Washington Commanders to be considered at the quarterback at the number two position? It was Jaden Daniels, and the other one wasn't Drake May. And the other one wasn't Drake May. It was Sir J.J. McCarthy. So everybody that wanted to call me crazy and tell me that I was hot taking and clickbaiting, please let your apology be as loud as your disrespect. Because I'm riding on my high horse right now. I'm riding on my high horse right now because I'm uber excited because I think that we have somebody that can carry the not only the winning type of football, but the superstardom in the DMV region. Look at our Q rating for our athletes right now. Our, our most popular athlete is one of the GOATs of all time, Alexander Ovechkin, who's clearly past his prime. But, you know, he, he he's the only thing smoking in Washington right now. What you about to tell me, Bilal Koulibaly, that guy, right now? You about to tell me we got some stud on the roster? You about to tell me that Terry McClure is a top 10 receiver? No, Jaden Daniels gives you that type of electricity that's going to make you want to give your kid a, make you want to buy your kid a jersey to wear. Uh, at school because we're going to have pride because we're going to be a winning football team. I told you, I'm speaking all positive vibes and all good vibes uh, because it's, it's it's a new day. And if you don't feel that it's a new day, uh, I even mentioned to the boys yesterday as we were watching the videos, you know, that goodbye damn party that was at the bullpen last year. I feel like they should have had something like that yesterday because this is the true, this is where the new era is truly marked. You know, Josh, Josh, Josh Harris came right before training camp last year. He couldn't really do much. But now this is the offseason where we're going to see his fingerprints start to be laid on this foundation. No Diddy and Adam Peters uh, on this organization. And Adam Peters, um, you know, evil genius mind at work on this roster construction. So before we head on out of here, guys, I just wanted to prepare you for today. Because today is another uber exciting day. While yesterday had low volume with our only one pick with being, what, 10 to 15 minutes into the draft. We have five picks tonight. All five being in the top 100. We have pick 36, pick 40, pick 67, pick 78, and pick 100. And that's a result of us not necessarily trading up. Even though a lot of people were talking about us potentially trading up 
for an offensive tackle. That ultimately didn't happen as they started to fly off the board like Amerigus Mims, like a Jordan Morgan towards the back half of the first round. And I think that, you know, we just decided to keep our draft capital because um, there's not necessarily a huge gap between those back end of that top eight tackle prospects and um, some of the tackles that I'll mention as I go through this list. Also, we might have wanted to keep that draft capital because there's been Rumors going around for the last 48 hours, really since the Super Bowl, but it's really been picked up over the last 48 hours that the San Francisco 49ers um, are looking to either get off of Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. And if you listen to Jaden Daniels in his introductory presser with the media yesterday, he said that he talks to Brandon Ayuk three to four times a day. Every day. Like in the present moment. This ain't when they was at Arizona State. Like, like he talked to him three or four times yesterday. He hopped on Instagram live with him as soon as he got drafted yesterday. So they're really good friends. So are we keeping this this draft capital to try to you know come up with a package to potentially pair Jaden Daniels with one of his best friends in the NFL and one of the better receivers um, after the 2023 season? Who knows? That's why the NFL draft is such a spectacle every year. Um, and to end this out, um, here are some list of some names that I want uh, to give you guys or I want you guys to look for as we go through this draft today. So I just put out a tweet. If you follow me on Twitter, I said, our wish list at 36 and 40. We have TJ Tampa, Enos Rakeshaw Jr., Kool-Aid McKinstry. Those are all DBs. Those are all specifically cornerbacks. We have Lad McConkey. We have Adonai Mitchell out of Texas. And we have Keon Coleman. Those are wide receivers. And then I listed Patrick Paul, Roger Rosengarten, and Kingsley Suamata. Those are tackles. I said DBs, wide receivers, or offensive tackles. Any of these positions, and I'll be completely fine and happy about this weekend. If not, I might have to hashtag raise hell. Because you see our new hashtag. And if you see, go ahead and follow me on social media. If you can see that there, at Bleeding BNG. Try to get that camera to focus. You see it. Uh, but yeah, um, super exciting times. It's a new day in Washington. I'm super excited. I hope you guys feel the same. Um, I'm going to be coming out with more content as the draft picks um, start to unveil themselves as the second and third round start to unfold. And even on day three, because, you know, the late round, the late round picks is really where our money is made um, and really where the roster start to separate themselves. Everybody got first round talents. It's the seventh round and the sixth round talents to start to separate the contenders from the pretenders. And that's why the draft is one of my favorite uh, moments or events every year. So that'll do it for this episode, Matt. Let me know how you feel about JD5 coming to Washington. Is he JD5? I don't know. Is Trust going to give up the number? Let me know. Let me know how excited you were when you saw the pick. If you were disappointed, let us know that as well because we love chopping it up with you guys in the community. Like I said, I'm going to have a lot more videos, a lot more content coming out because it's the offseason. It's the offseason. And until we start winning on the football field, which I think is going to happen, the offseason is the Washington football franchise's time to sign. Um, so that'll do it for this episode. Keep tuning into the page. Because um, I got a lot. I got a lot of content I'm going to be pushing out. And you guys wouldn't want to miss it. Thank you guys for tuning into this episode. And I'll check in on you guys later. Peace.